Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the acute inflammatory response and anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so we've now completed our discussion of the acute inflammatory response and we're now going to talk about anti-inflammatory drugs and there are a huge number of anti-inflammatory drugs. Okay, so the ones we're going to start with are antihistamines. Okay, so number one, antihistamines. Now, these are very straightforward. These are just drugs which are competitive antagonists for the H1 receptor, so antihistamines. Now, it's important to say that there are Com there are other histamine receptors other than just the H1 receptor. However, it's the H1 receptor which is extremely important in inflammation. So, just to remind you, remember, uh, when we initially have a pathogen in our tissue, then what is going to happen is that uh, the sentinel cells are going to react to that pathogen, okay, and they'll start releasing these cries for help. Okay, so the dendritic cells and the resident macrophages start releasing interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, but uh, the mast cells start releasing uh, histamine. Now, interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, they cause type 2 activation of endothelial cells, which takes hours, whereas histamine causes type 1 activation of endothelial cells, which takes minutes, basically, and causes increased blood supply to the area, it causes the formation of an inflammatory exudate, and it also causes the recruitment of neutrophils. Okay, so antihistamines are going to stop this from occurring, okay? But the histamine receptor that was on the surface of the endothelial cells, okay, so let me just redraw it out here. So here is the phospholipid bilayer of an endothelial cell. And here is our 7 transmembrane receptor, which is the H1 receptor, which, remember, was GQ coupled and triggered um, the formation of the alpha Q, GTP, and also the beta gamma subunit, which then went on to uh, cause type 1 activation. It's all here. Okay, so what I want to say is that there are other histamine receptors. There's the H2 receptor, there is also the H3 receptor, I think there might even be the H4 receptor now. Okay, but the one that is on these endothelial cells, the one that causes um, the uh, acute inflammatory response or causes type 1 activation of endothelial cells, this is the H1 receptor, the histamine type 1 receptor. Now, why is this important? Well, basically, there are other drugs which are competitive antagonists for other histamine receptors, for the H2 receptors, for instance, that are involved in trying to prevent gastric ulcers. So there are competitive antagonists for other histamine receptors, and you could also call these antihistamines. However, when people say antihistamines, unless they clarify, you can assume they mean histamine receptor type 1 competitive antagonist. Uh, so these are the main types of antihistamines. So a histamine type 1 competitive antagonist. Okay, so these are drugs which will bind to these H1 receptors on the surface of these endothelial cells. Okay, so let me put this here. So it's going to bind to the H1 receptor on the surface of the endothelial cell. So let's say this is our antihistamine drug here. And it will not do anything to the receptor. It will not activate the receptor. So it won't activate the catalytic activity of this receptor, and therefore it won't activate uh, the conversion of uh, the alpha-GDP subunit to the alpha-GTP subunit, and therefore it won't activate the GQG protein. Okay. However, what it will do is it will stop histamine from being able to come over here and activate the receptor because the histamine simply won't be able to bind to the receptor anymore. So these drugs are drugs which bind to the H1 receptor and stop histamine from being able to bind, okay? And thereby, they're going to stop histamine from being able to activate the receptor and therefore stop type 1 activation of endothelial cells. Okay, so clearly these are going to have a very powerful effect at stopping uh, 
the acute inflammatory response because they're completely going to stop type 1 activation of the endothelial cells. Now they're not going to stop type 2 activation, but remember many of the things that were associated with type 2 activation required type 1 activation to have occurred first. So for instance, type 2 activation resulted in the production of cyclooxygenase 2 enzymes. Okay, let me try and find the page where I've shown this. Okay, let me just search for it. Ah, here we go. So, type 2 activation caused the production of cyclooxygenase 2 enzymes, which acted on arachidonic acid, converting it into prostaglandin H2, which is then converted into prostacyclin. However, if there's no arachidonic acid to work on, uh, then COX-2, creating COX-2 enzymes, is totally pointless basically and the arachidonic acid is produced by type 1 activation of those endothelial cells so basically it won't just kill off effects of type 2, 1 activation it will also kill for instance this uh, activity of type 2 activation okay so it does have a very powerful anti-inflammatory effect so examples of these drugs which are uh, H1 receptor antagonists are diphenhydramine. Okay, so this is a very important example. Diphenhydramine. Okay, and another example is uh, fexofenadine. So this is fexofenadine. So these drugs um, are often used to treat hay fever. That's the famous example of what they're used to treat. They stop the acute inflammatory reaction which occurs uh, within uh, hay fever when you uh, launch an immune response against pollen, basically. And that is another example of why you would want to uh, stop the acute inflammatory response if you're initiating it against something that's really innocuous, basically, such as uh, pollen that you should not be initiating an inflammatory response against. And which which actually initiating the inflammatory response against that is actually very dangerous in some cases. Okay, so diphenhydramine and thexofenadine are competitive antagonists for the histamine type 1 receptor. They'll bind to the H1 receptor and they'll block histamine from being able to activate that receptor and thereby they'll kill all of type 1 activation and certain bits of type 2 activation as well and they hugely reduce the inflammatory response. Okay, uh, the next uh, type of uh, drug I want to talk about is things which are going to intercept tumor necrosis factor alpha. Okay, so these are drugs which will bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha and stop its, uh, well, stop it from getting to the tumor necrosis factor uh, receptor 1, basically, and therefore stop it from uh, activating type 2 activation within endothelial cells. Okay, so remember, when our uh, sentinel cells uh, detect the pathogen, the dendritic cells and the resident macrophages will start releasing tumor necrosis factor alpha and this makes its way to the endothelial cells and triggers type 2 activation okay by binding to the tumor necrosis factor receptor 1 okay so these drugs aim at binding to the tumor necrosis factor alpha before it ever gets to the endothelial cells okay so intercepting it basically so one example of what we're going to do and let me just draw a little picture here. So here, let's say, is our dendritic cell, which has detected the pathogen and has now, or potentially hasn't detected the pathogen, has potentially been activated by something innocuous. For instance, that's my, maybe where uh, we'd want to um, block this from happening. Okay, so it's going to release this tumor necrosis factor alpha, which we'll draw as a sort of rectangle here. Okay, and this is going to go and act on the endothelial cells and cause type 2 activation unless we can block it basically ever getting there and that's what these drugs are going to do okay so the first example uh, well the first two examples are going to be antibodies monoclonal antibodies which bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha 
and therefore intercept it. And once the antibody has bound, the tumor necrosis factor alpha can't bind to the tumor necrosis factor receptor 1 on the surface of the endothelial cells and therefore can't produce uh, type 2 activation of those endothelial cells. Okay, so let me draw this on. So here is our antibody. So remember, antibodies have these very characteristic Y-shaped structures where they have two heavy chains, which I'll highlight in a certain colour. So in orange, these are the two heavy chains. There's one, here is the other, linked together by a disulfide bond, and that's smudged horribly, but never mind. And then we've got two light chains in purple here. And uh, those are attached to the heavy chains, again, by uh, disulfide bonds, okay? So each heavy chain has a light chain associated with it. Now, the uh, antigen binding domain of the antibody is up here. So this will bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha. So these are specific antibodies which have been uh, produced against tumor necrosis factor alpha. So they are specifically made so that they bind this. Not all antibodies will bind tumor necrosis factor alpha. All antibodies have a slightly different binding region here and therefore will bind to slightly different ligands, basically. But these ones are targeted against tumor necrosis factor alpha. Now, there are two um, antibodies which have been produced which will bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha. And these are quite um, nasty drugs, but they can be used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. And I think they are now used to treat rheumatoid arthritis. So infliximab is one of these uh, monoclonal antibodies against tumor necrosis factor alpha. And another one is adalimumab. And I don't know who comes up with these names. They're quite fantastic, the monoclonal antibody names. So infliximab and adalimumab. Okay, so those are both monoclonal antibodies that are against tumor necrosis factor alpha. Now, what will this do? Well, if you take one of these drugs, uh, then basically if you begin the acute inflammatory response, if your uh, sentinel cells start releasing interleukin-1, tumor necrosis factor, and histamine, uh, then uh, you're going to intercept the tumor necrosis factor alpha, so you're going to hugely reduce the amount of type 2 activation that is going to occur. Now remember, type 1 activation is kind of a little feeble. It's very quick, but it's kind of pathetic. It does things in a pathetic sort of way. It vasodilates by the terminal arterioles. It increases vascular permeability, but only slightly. It starts recruiting neutrophils, but again, it's only slightly. Type 2 activation is really needed to uh, make these responses much bigger. They vasodilate the terminal arterioles properly. They increase vascular permeability properly. They um, start recruiting neutrophils properly. Okay, and then they start recruiting monocytes. So type 2 activation really is the bigger response, although type 1 activation is the quicker one. So if you hugely reduce type 2 activation, then you're going to hugely reduce the acute inflammatory response. And you've seen so far that all of these drugs that we've talked about so far are aimed at stopping these pro-inflammatory mediators that are released by sentinel cells. And that's a clever target because, after all, that is what initiates the acute inflammatory response. The clear thing to target is these pro-inflammatory mediators that are causing the entire thing. If you want to stop the acute inflammatory response, then stop the things which cause the acute inflammatory response. Here we've seen histamine being targeted. This way um, was by targeting the receptor and stopping it uh, from being able to bind the histamine. Whereas here we've seen two drugs which actually take out the tumor necrosis factor alpha. Now, the news gets worse for tumor necrosis factor alpha. There is another drug which is capable of binding to it and intercepting it, basically. And this is not an antibody. This is actually a um, tumor necrosis factor receptor that we have made, which is um, recombinant, which means it's slightly genetically modified, okay? Um, but it binds to tumor necrosis factor alpha, and it is soluble, okay? So basically, it's a receptor for tumor necrosis factor alpha that will just be soluble, and it will bind to the soluble tumor necrosis factor alpha, and 
sequester it basically because once the tumor necrosis factor alpha has this drug here bound to it, then is it going to be able to bind to the tumor necrosis factor receptor 1 on the surface of the endothelial cells? Well, the answer is no. Okay, so what is the name of this drug which binds to tumor necrosis factor alpha um, and is a recombinant tumor necrosis factor receptor? Okay, so this drug is known as etanercept. Okay, and we'll see another example of this for interleukin 1. So etanercept. Okay, right, so we'll call it there for this video and in the next video what we'll then look at is things which are going to target interleukin 1. So we're going to have drugs which target all three of the initiators of the acute inflammatory response. We've seen antihistamines, we've seen three drugs which target tumor necrosis factor alpha and we're now going to see drugs which target the interleukin 1.